Hey guys, welcome back to a really special uh, tutorial today. We're going to be sculpting. So I know a lot of you guys have suggested this. I actually picked out the Pokemon Mew. So we're actually going to be sculpting him today from scratch. I'm just going to be kind of going for it. No plan as usual, uh, but usually that's the type of tutorial that everybody has been requesting anyway. So let's go ahead and hop into it. So on the right hand side here, guys, I have a program called Pure Ref and I took a couple images from Google. Um, and we're just going to be using primitives and we're going to be using those to actually sculpt. So let me go ahead and make sure my live streamers can see what I'm doing here. Okay. We've got our, our references on the right. I am also on the right hand side and I'm just going to move this up for you guys so you can see. Cool. Um, and then I'm also going to full screen my face just a little bit more because I know how much you guys appreciate me. So, all right. Let's go ahead and hop into it. So I'm in a new Blender document. I'm just gonna delete everything. I'm gonna delete the camera too. Actually, I'm gonna keep the camera. And we're just gonna snap the camera to like a side view so we can easily reference um, our sides here. I'm gonna put it at 90 degrees and I'm just gonna move it back on the Y axis. I'm gonna quickly save my project as mute. Okay, did I spell that right? I think I did, M-E-W, yeah, we're good. All right, let's go ahead and add in a sphere. So the reason I'm starting with this sphere is because I think it closely resembles the bottom half of the body. So like the half where the legs are connected. So I'm gonna kind of start in that area and I might even import our, um, I might like take this image and actually put it in Blender so that we can actually put it behind our object if that makes sense. So let me actually get a screenshot of that because it's saved as a WEBP or whatever it is, WebP. So I'm just gonna save this to my desktop as capture one and I'm going to go add image reference or no sorry at oh did I not put image as planes so in order to enable image as planes I believe it's an add-on let me see image import image as planes yep you just want to enable that add-on now I should be able to do add image as planes and I'm going to go ahead and select that scale it up go to my material preview and there it is so what I'm gonna do is basically just put this behind my sphere on the Y axis so that I have a nice reference for it. Let's go ahead and snap to our camera and let's go ahead and make this 1920 by 1920 and let's back the camera up so that it meets the frame of the image. Now you don't have to do it this way. This is just the way that I'm doing it. And then I'm gonna actually move my sphere down towards where the bottom of the body starts just to kind of give us a frame of reference. So we're gonna be referring to this view a lot and the reason we're going to do that is because then we can easily line up everything that we're working on. So let's hop over to the sculpting uh, tab here, snap to our camera again, go to our material preview. And now we're going to actually get into the sculpting part. Thank you guys for being so patient. So again, you want to make sure you have your sphere selected before you actually start sculpting here. And I'm actually going to probably remesh this along the way, but for now we're just going to go ahead and mess around with everything here. So. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and switch over to cycles as well. Um, and then I'm just going to give our world a color of white. Now this is the rendered view, so it's going to be pretty intense looking. So you can always go back to material preview if you want to. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and click on inflate and I'm going to increase my radius of my brush. And basically what inflate does is exactly what you'd expect. It starts to inflate the sphere. So anything that you're pressing on, it's basically going to expand it as if you're putting air inside of that object. Now, before I go too far, I'm probably going to remesh this so that I have more vertices to work with, but this is looking good so far. I'm going to bump up my strength a little bit so I can actually match the curvature of the body here. Normally I don't like to use inflate. In fact, my favorite tool is the elastic tool, which is right here, elastic deform. And you can literally click and grab these edges and perfectly form them to what you're trying to create. Now, as you can see, there's gonna be a little bit of limitations with how you're gonna be able to move these curves around. So I'm actually going to remesh this. So I'm gonna click on the remesh tab up here in the top right. Um, and I'm just gonna click on remesh and let's go ahead and see what this gives us for the default. And that looks pretty good. So as you can see, if you tab into edit mode, you can see a lot more vertices now than what we originally started with. And we can start to smooth things out as we go. So now when I go ahead and adjust these curves, I can really fine tune this to what I'm looking for. So this is already starting to look really good. Um, and then eventually I'm probably going to inflate the legs outwards. Now, if we look at this from a side view, it's gonna look very strange. So for now, I'm gonna stick to camera view and then we're gonna adjust as we go. For example, in the back here, this would come back way more. Like this part would be way more inflated. 
So of course you could use your inflate tool right here because his body is actually, and you could probably also use, honestly, the elastic deform tool is my favorite tool by far. Um, yeah. Also, we can actually go ahead and give our sphere a material and we can highlight this color or we can select this color here, this nice pink color. We can give it like a lower roughness or something like that. Uh, let me pop up the metallic. Let's go ahead and increase that saturation and brightness. That looks pretty good for now. Again, when we actually go back and like render everything, we'll add like a subdivision surface. But for now, it just helps to have this color on hand. All right, so, so far I'm pretty happy with all this. Again, you can zoom in to get these fine details here. Um, and not everything is gonna look exactly correct when you go back to your other side views. So that's why we have to do like a lot of fine tuning here as we go. But let's go ahead and round out these legs by using the inflate tool. So let's go ahead and zoom in, start to inflate this area, okay? So I'm just gonna inflate it so that I have something to work with here. Just give ourselves like a little like bulge area and then we're actually going to pull that down with the elastic tool now this is definitely 100 percent not best practice guys but i'm doing it like this because this is kind of just how i know how to do it again you guys use these tools however you want i'm just showing you how i would go about doing it um, and this is definitely not the quickest way to do this either and i'm actually going to remesh this real quick so i have more to work with again Cool. And every time you remesh, it's just basically recalculating like what you have. I'm actually going to remesh it one more time with point instead of point one, I'm going to use point zero, maybe like six remesh. It's not going to let me. There we go. See how now we have so many more subdivisions to work with. So now it's going to be a lot easier to actually like pull this leg down here. Right. And again, from the side view, it's probably going to look very, very strange. I will show you guys in just a second. Um, let's just see what we have here. Yeah, cool. So I want to push this up more. Also, you can turn on ghost mode in solid view, I believe, but we can't, then we won't be able to see our image. So for now, I'm just going to keep that the way it is. Perfect. And I'm actually going to inflate his like belly area right here. Perfect. Cool. Let's go ahead back to our elastic tool, which is my favorite tool by far. Let's go ahead and bring this down. Again, I'm probably going to speed this up into a time lapse. I'm really not sure yet. I don't know what my plans are for this. So I'm going to also remesh one more time. Cool. And remember, every time you remesh, like I said, it kind of like recalculates everything for you. Like I'll probably remesh one more time again. And I'm just trying to extrude all this stuff out so that I have something to work with here. And again, this is probably going to look like complete crap when I go to the side view. So guys, don't get discouraged if you are sculpting and you start to see like, like it looks really weird. Like from the side view, it looks horrible, right? So this is not exactly what we want, but you can start to pull this back in, right? This very back side right here. Now I'm not using symmetrical editing, but it is something that you can do. So right now, like obviously like his thigh will come out past this but we'll get there in a second. Right now I'm just roughing out the general shape of what we're looking for here. And no guys, I'm not an expert. So if you see something that I'm doing that's wrong, you feel free to point it out to me. This guy said, I'm watching. I know, I wouldn't be able to see your comment if you weren't watching. <laughs> People crack me up. You guys are so funny. Though the, some of the comments you guys are adding. Um, all right, let's go ahead and add a uh, inflation right here so I want to add some inflation on both sides for the arms here and then I think the head I'm probably gonna make that a separate piece so yeah let's go ahead and inflate that and let's go ahead and grab our elastic tool and start pulling that out like that cool and then I'm gonna remesh cool remesh is like the savior i think i don't remember who showed me remesh but it literally saves your life like it it's going to save your life every single time because you don't want to have to um you can't you can add material like like as if this was clay but i just like remeshing better because then i can extrude stuff and then i can come back to it so this looks good cool and of course when you adjust your brush size you can more finely tune everything Obviously, this is completely like not correct yet, but we're getting there. And a remesh again. 
and oh, it looks like he does have like fingers. He has like three prongs for fingers. So I guess we'll actually have to take care of that as well. It's kind of funny. I didn't notice. Like, does he have like? Can he move his fingers? Like, how does that work? I don't know. I guess his power is he has opposable thumbs and other Pokemon do not. I don't know. Now, another thing we're going to end up doing is adding a subdivision surface modifier to this, but we're not ready to do that yet. Um, so far, this is looking really good. So I want to actually like look at some of my references on the right-hand side here. Let me first X out of this. And I'm going to zoom in and kind of take a look at those as well. These are our references that we have. And I kind of want to look at this one specifically because you can start to see how his body actually looks. So it's sort of egg-shaped where his belly comes out beyond his legs. So I think I'm going to start by doing that. So I'm going to actually take my inflate tool and I'm going to make him look pregnant. So let's go ahead, let's go ahead and do that. Start inflating him there a little bit. And like I said, it kind of wraps around. I don't know that he has a butt per se, but he does have like, oops, he does have this back part behind him. Like, like I said, it's kind of like an egg shape. Like he kind of looks like that. Okay, that was a little bit too much, but you guys get the idea. Um, and what's really great is we can continue to, you guessed it, remesh. I'm gonna lower the, I'm gonna raise the resolution a little bit to 0 0.3, 0 0.03. And as you can see, now we have a ton more vertices that we're working with here, guys. Again, remesh is your best friend, especially when you're doing stuff like this. Because um, then, then we can really go in here, we can like inflate his thighs and all that. Um, let me first start by also bending his leg. Um, so let's go ahead and take this part. Kind of start moving it backwards, right? It's going to move some of the other stuff as well. But the goal is to take this and literally bring it all the way into the front. Oops, sorry. We're going to bring it to the front like that. And then we can inflate that when we're, when we're ready, which I will do. But basically everything kind of comes back here. Like it comes back into like, I guess his, it's almost like a reverse knee. I don't know how to explain like what it is. And another tool that I want to go over, guys, I'm sorry, I know I'm supposed to actually be teaching you guys here, the smooth tool. Go ahead and take a look at what the smooth tool does. Whoa, it, you guessed it, smooths. So if you just ran over the whole thing, you can see how smooth everything gets. And it is useful, but keep in mind, you don't want to use it until you're really ready to. Like, I really shouldn't have used it there, but that's okay. All right, let's go ahead to our grab tool again and start kind of forming this. Um, now the hardest part is going to be getting that symmetry between each foot, like the actual sizing of everything. But so this is kind of like his back heel here. And then this part right here is going to be his thigh. That's going to kind of come out. So I think I'm going to try to inflate that again, not an expert modeler here guys, but I'm going to try to do what I think looks good. Um, it looks like his thigh comes out just a little bit more than that. So I'm going to try to grab as much of it as I can bring it forward. Kind of like that. And then I also want to bring the side out a little bit too. Okay. His thigh starts really high too. Like he, he has like a very, like it's kind of like he's athletic, but he's not. I don't know how to explain it. Um, anyway, I'm going to go back to my inflate tool. Um, let's go ahead and start inflating this area here. That looks pretty good. It looks like we're going to have to crease this area in here. Let me see if this will work here. So the crease... Guys, when you're using the crease, you're basically taking any edge and you're giving it a more intense crease, just like you're seeing right here. So this is an easy way to outline parts of the body. So for example, his thigh, I'm going to outline it very easily like that, right? And then towards the back, it looks like it comes back here as well. So just be really careful with this because it can mess you up. Um, like back there, I probably might undo that. For now, I think that looks good. I mean, he's looking kind of like a chicken out of the oven, but that's okay. He does look good though. I think overall I'm pretty happy with where we're at so far with the sculpting process. Um, and then what I think I might do is I might bring this back here. I'll just keep kind of working on this leg a little bit and I'll more than likely come back to it. Make sure I'm looking at my references here. Yeah, I mean his, his, his actual foot is like pretty big and it comes out, like his, his foot is basically part of his like leg like there is no like ankle unless you consider this to be the ankle 
So I'm enjoying this so far. I think this looks really good. Um, we'll come back to the arms in a second, but why don't I try to form this second leg here, see what we can do with that. So let's go ahead and see what position his second leg is in. Looks like it's far down yet again, like kind of like really far down like that. It still comes out in the front, but it's further back than the other one. So we're gonna have to keep that in mind as we create this. Kind of push those sides in. And the proportions, guys, are gonna be really hard to get correct um, because we're not using symmetrical editing. If we were, it would be 10 times easier. Um, so I'm gonna try my best to like match these, but it's definitely not easy. And for those of you wondering, I am using a mouse. I'm not using a tablet. You probably would wanna use a tablet for this, um, especially if you're trying to like really, really get into sculpting and really learn sculpting. I'm only using a mouse because I just am gen genuinely like more comfortable with that. And that's kind of how I started anyway. So I don't know, I, I don't feel the need to use a tablet, but I can guarantee you if you were gonna do this like for a long time, you would want to, um, cause you just get better over time. So it's 2 a.m. in India right now. And someone said it's 2 a.m. Kenny. Guys, I'm sorry, I, um, I can't control the time. <laughs> But all right, let's go back to the crease tool and let's go ahead and give this just a nice little crease in here. Kind of start outlining that egg shaped body a little bit. Kind of give his thigh some definition here. My man's been working out, he's looking good. Um, and I think I might even have to inflate the belly just a little bit more. That's a little too much. Maybe like down on the underside here. What do you guys think? I feel like that looks pretty good for his feet so far. They're a little bit like weird in the back. In fact, I need to pull this heel up here. Like here, let me go like that. Kind of like that. Kind of form form like a heel in the back. Kind of like that. I think it looks pretty good. Again, this is kind of all like experimenting. Like I have no idea how this is gonna turn out when I'm done. Um, but let's go ahead and just try to finalize the arms and then we'll work on the head. I think once we have the head, it'll look a lot better and it'll really come together. So let me go to my elastic deform, kind of bring everything in a little bit because it looks like his neck, like everything like starts arching right here. Yeah, like it kind of starts arching almost like he's curving his back, but he's not. That's just the natural shape of his back. So now in terms of the arms, <laughs> this, these arms need some work, guys. Let me go ahead and zoom in on this arm and start inflating it a little bit. Um, let's go back to camera view real quick. Um, let's go ahead and inflate these a little bit so we have a little bit more to work with. Let's remesh this down to 0 0.02. Cool, now it's remeshed. Now as you can see, we lost a little definition here and that's because we, did, we, we can smooth that back over. But so far I'm like pretty happy with how far we've come with this. I knew this would be relatively simple to model, but um, again, it's about getting those proportions correct. That's the hardest part. So let me go ahead and keep forming the top here. What am I, what am I on right here? Oh, I'm, an, I'm on inflate, that's fine. Um, actually, I might as well start inflating the neck area, right? Because we are gonna have to have a neck protrusion right under the head, and then I'm gonna add a completely separate sphere for the head. And we're gonna remesh that a ton of times until we kind of like get it right. So this is gonna be the start of the neck here. Um, and it looks like the neck just smoothly like goes right into the body. So I'm going to smooth that out a little bit. Cool. That's fine for now. I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, let's go ahead and outline those fingers, huh? Um, let me go ahead and take the grab tool. So the fingers are pretty simple. They're like three nubs. So I don't think we're gonna have to do much with these. And I'm probably not gonna go into like crazy detail, like I'm not gonna add fingernails and dumb shit like that. Um, but I do want to be like an anatomically accurate in terms of what the Pokemon actually looks like. What's this side look like? Same deal on this side, just has three fingers. One is protruding out, one's protruding like up, and then one's protruding like sort of down. Kind of like that. <laughs> it looks silly, but it's also like, that's what he looks like. I don't know. I, that's that's his character, right? What do you guys think? We could have probably tried a little bit harder on the arms. Let me flatten the back 
with the elastic tool. There is a flatten tool, but I'm actually not going to use that because I'll show you later. I'll have to show you what it actually does later, but it, it actually messes things up a little bit, so we're not going to use that. Let's go ahead and check the width of the arm here. Bring that in a little bit. Checking every angle here. Cool. Guys, I'm pretty happy with what we have so far. Let's go ahead and make the head. Um, so I'm going to go back to my layout tab for a second. Click off of that. Add mesh uh, sphere. Bring it up. Go to my side view. Oops, sorry, side view. Bring it like right above our neck area right there. Snap back to our camera. Scale it up. Bring it like, I guess, right here. I guess I'm going to have to take this one and hide it for a second while we sculpt the other side because it kind of looks like his face is like angled. So I guess we'll have to keep that in mind as we go. Um, but for now, I'm just going to sculpt it and then we can rotate it later. So we have our sphere here. Let's go ahead and head back into the sculpting mode and let's go ahead and remesh this. I'm just going to remesh it to 0.04. That's fine. And then we're going to go ahead and use the inflate tool to start kind of um, shaping up his face. But you know what I realized, guys, this is a great moment to show you the symmetry option. So in the top right here, you'll see these X, Y, Z. Um, we're going to use the X symmetry. So anything I do to one side will happen to the other. And I'm going to remesh this one more time at a, at a much higher level. We'll do 0.2. Cool. So now, like I said, guys, anything I do to one side will happen to the other. And you have to just make sure you select the correct axis that you want to apply your symmetry to. In my case, it was the x-axis, and it's looking really good. So I'm just going to continue on kind of just using uh, the simplest tools that I can to actually fill out the face here. Um, and I'm going to also copy go to my side view so I can actually see like what's happening here. Uh, I'm going to remesh it one more time at point, point zero 0.03. How about that? Now we have a lot to work with. Perfect. That was what I was looking for. I'm going to smooth it over real quick. That looks good. Smooth the backside as well. All right, cool. So now we have a nice smooth surface with a lot of vertices to work with. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at what we need to build here. It looks like we're going to need to build the ears um, and then some cutouts for the eyes and its nose. Its nose definitely hangs lower in its face. So I'm going to start to um, inflate that right here. Just going to inflate the general area and we're going to have to crease this as well i'm realizing because it kind of if you look really closely right here it looks like there's like a crease area so i'm just going to kind of try my best to fill this out as best as i can here those are the cheeks and then let's go ahead and make some spots for the ears here which are going to be right behind his cheeks almost like connected to his cheeks in a weird way I'm just going to keep inflating so that we can start to build these out. I'm just clicking rapidly, basically. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these with our elastic tool and I'm going to form them however I like. So I'm going to pinch them towards the top. I'm going to remesh real quick so we have more geometry to work with there. And I'm going to make them bigger. Let's go ahead and take a look what we have so far. They're going to need to be a little bit bigger than that. We're also going to need to take the back of the head and maybe squish it a little bit. I don't know how much, how thick his head is, so we're going to have to really figure that out eventually. Um, I'm going to smooth everything over a little bit. And I just realized we should probably give this a material, huh? There we go. That's much easier to see. All right, so we're just going to give it that pink material just so we can see it. Um, I don't know why I didn't do that earlier. Sorry about that, guys. Um, those corners on those ears are incredibly sharp, so I'm going to try to sharpen those up by using my various tools that I have showed you, even though we really didn't go over that many. Um, where is crease? Oh, here we go. Multi-plane scrape. Let me show you guys what this tool does real quick. I'm, I'm going to undo this, but multi-plane scrape allows you to pinch an area as if you're like squeezing it. So I'm probably going to use that for our ears and then come back once they're um, once they're scraped properly. So I'm just gonna pinch them in a little bit. That looks a little bit better. Cool, all right, I'm happy with that. And I'm gonna inflate them a little bit more too. 
kind of give them a little bit more definition. Cool. And I'm also going to use our elastic tool to continue to work on this back part here. Okay. He's going to be, his face is definitely going to be the hardest part. I already knew it was when we started it. Um, because it's hard to tell like what this would look like in, in the third dimension. So we're really kind of just going for what we think looks best. Um, for example, like there's like a crease right here. Let me see if I can even add it. There's like a crease right here, you know, but it's hard to like see that from this other side. So I don't know that he has dimples or what, but for now we can start kind of like roughly outlining the nose a little bit more. Let me just see what it looks like with the body. I'm curious. Interesting. So I almost want to just take his head and, and turn it, but not yet because we're still in symmetry mode. So obviously it's not connected to the body, um, but we will connect it um, and make sure it aligns with the neck perfectly based on this picture. I think I might need another reference Im image, guys. Let me go back to Chrome real quick. Let me find a picture of his face. Okay. That's, mm, see there, okay, this one's good. Okay. I feel like this is a good reference. So I'm gonna save this, save image as uh, to downloads, that's fine. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my layout tab real quick, add image, image as planes, go to my downloads, select the image, oops, that's the wrong image, file, sorry, add mesh, wait, I'm losing it guys, add image as planes, okay, sorry about that. Um, where was that? It was this one. Okay, cool. So we found the image. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my head back on. I'm going to rotate this a little bit, scale it up, and try my best to match the outline. Cool. This is going to be a lot easier. I don't know why I didn't think of this in the first place, guys, but this would probably be the better method than what I did before. So let's go back to our sculpting. Um, and let's make sure we're on the correct thing. Yep, cool. All right, now let's go to our side view and let's actually match this correctly. Um, let me first take this. Why is our side view not working? Let me go back to my layout. I was snapped to my camera. I'm actually gonna do side view. Remember, when you're snapped to your side view, it's gonna look much different than your camera. So actually be careful about that. And that'll be fine for now. All right, so we're gonna use that and then we'll scale it accordingly based on the previous image, um, which is right here. I'm actually gonna hide that for now, just for simplicity purposes here. All right, so guys, sorry about that. Let's go back and resume what we were doing. Um, all right, cool. We have a much better understanding of what this character actually looks like now that we have a better reference image. And why am I not allowed to do anything with this? Is this working? All right, for some weird reason, I cannot edit this. What's happening? Let's see if I can edit this one. All right, guys, I'm gonna close out of Blender and reopen it. I'm not sure what was going on there. It was not allowing me to edit the thing that I'm trying to edit. <laughs> Still is not. I'm back. I figured out how to resume sculpting. I, I'm not sure what happened there, so I just switched around a bunch of settings and now I'm back. So let's go to our side view again and let's actually start to round out our shape for our face. I'm gonna hide the other part of the body so we can actually see what it is that we're doing here. Cool. And I'm gonna start to round out the proper proportions for the shape, or for the face, sorry, rather. Cool. This part will be interesting. I'm going to remesh that again, smooth it out real quick. Okay. All right. Sorry about that, guys. I I'm not sure what the heck the deal was with that. Someone said rotation. Was that what was happening? The rotation was messed up? That's so weird though. That's never, ever, ever happened to me. God forbid one thing goes wrong in Blender, right? 
All right, this is looking a little bit better. Um, are you just using a mirror modifier or something else? No, yeah, exactly. I'm using the um, the symmetrical or oh my god, symmetry editing, whatever it's called. Yeah. So all I'm doing here, guys, is I'm just trying to like match this as close as possible to the actual image here. Smooth this over as well. Cool. All right. All right. I'm a lot happier that this is actually working now. Cool. Let's go ahead and check that. That is good as well. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I could spend all day trying to get it perfect, but I feel like there's no point in that. I'm just trying to teach you guys like the base. The, honestly, the whole point of this was to teach you guys like the basics of sculpting. Um, and I feel like I pretty much covered like the basics. Um, again, there's just so much you can do. Like there really, really, really is. There's literally so much you can do with just the tools that I taught. Um, I want to make the face more round in the front and I want to smooth it out as well. There we go. Cool. I actually want to inflate like the front part of the face a little bit. There we go. He's not fat, but he's also like, he's just got some weird curvy parts to his body. I'm like pretty happy with that. I feel like we can start working on the eyes now. Um, let me go back to my layout tab, go to my material preview. I'm going to actually duplicate this so I can take a look at the face. And let's go back to our sculpting tab, click on our sphere again. Let me just make sure I have this selected properly. I don't, why does this keep happening to me? All right, click on that, sculpting. All right, cool, we're good to go. So now we can keep sculpting everything as we were. All right, so what I wanna do is I think I wanna add like, basically add like eye sockets to this thing. Um, not too intense, but like just enough that it looks good. Let me see what the other one looked like. Yeah, he's, it's interesting because he has these um, like these sockets, but they're not like so inset that they're like crazy intense, you know what I mean? So like, let me go ahead and turn the radius down for this. He has them, but they're just not, they're not like intense. I don't know how to explain it. I wanna take this and move it. Oops, sorry about that guys. Let's just move this. Perfect. All right, now let's go back to sculpting again. There we go. Um, and let's try to actually finish this thing up because I spent way too much time on this. All right. Let me think about exactly what this would look like. Um, I'm also thinking before I get into the eye sockets, I want to inflate the nose upwards like that. And then I want to take the elastic tool and just bring in the top of like the forehead area. Cause I think his nose is like, I don't know how to explain it. Like his nose is connected to like, the bridge of his nose is almost up all, all the way where his face is. Does that make sense guys? I don't even know if that made sense. All right, cool. All right, let's go ahead to our, I guess we could use the crease tool for now. Let me turn the radius way, way, way down. And let's see if we can just quickly like outline this thing it's gonna be tough I feel like that's the start that might be a little bit too close to the inside of his like snout area or whatever that's called but I'm just gonna like slowly methodically try to bring like an inset part of the face in like where his eye socket would be I think that looks pretty decent and I'm just using the elastic deform tool, which is my all time favorite tool guys, all time favorite tool. What do you guys think? I feel like that looks pretty decent. We just need to smooth it out a little bit. Yeah, I feel like that looks decent. I don't know, what do you guys think? 
and I'm pretty happy with that so far. Again, we're not using the crazy tools that Blender offers, but I'm using what I think looks good. Um, he also has these little dimples here. Let me see if I can actually use the, let's see, let's see, use the crease tool to actually get those. They're like right here. There's like these little small little things that go right there. Before I do that, I'm gonna remesh this down to 0.1, remesh. And then I'm gonna take this and just go like that. That's too much. I still feel like that's too much. Maybe that's just like the style of the animation. Is that even too much? Like, guys, I don't know. He has those little like dimples there. So I'm like, should I add that? I don't know. Um, another thing that we're gonna end up doing is adding the subdivision surface modifier anyway. Um, and then we're gonna go back over and smooth this all out like I just did with the smooth tool. We're gonna smooth out the back. I'm pretty happy with this. Let's go ahead and piece it together and just make a cool little scene. Um, the only thing really left would be to sculpt the eyes. Um, we can get into that, but that is like, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do the inside to be honest, but I guess I could sculpt the eyes. Let me just first go back to our layout. Let's go ahead and turn our body back on. And let's, uh, where did we originally have this lined up? Oh, I was lined up to the camera, that's right. So it was something like this. And let's go ahead and take our head here, bring it like right here. And we're just gonna rotate it on the Y axis a little bit. Bring it over, bring it maybe up, forward. I feel like that looks pretty good. Uh, we need to smooth this guy out too. I'm gonna add a subdivision surface modifier onto this. Oh no, this is totally gonna crash Blender. I should have waited for a second. Let me save that. All right, it's not crashing Blender. We're okay, guys, we're okay. But I am gonna shade both of these smooth. I don't even think this one needs a subdivision, but this one, I need to actually get rid of that modifier, go back to sculpting. Um, and I actually am gonna remesh this one last time at a very, very low value of 0 0.001. Remesh. And then I'm gonna smooth it out. Cool. Let me just zoom all the way out and I'm just gonna literally brush over everything. You're not gonna really be able to see what I'm doing until it's done. Um, let's go ahead and zoom in. See how smooth that is now? Um, and then I'm gonna go to my layout tab, snap to my camera, turn this off. And let's go ahead and just set up like a quick scene here. Um, that's more or less all I wanted to cover guys, just some basic sculpting. Um, but this was like really, really fun to just kind of go ahead and go for it with no plan. Um, now I'm going to add an HDRI. Let's add in this one. Win little winter scene for us here. Uh, maybe give ourselves some depth of field, of course. Focus on our guy's head here. And then we'll do like, I don't know, like point, point 0.1. <laughs> Something really, really low already looks so cool um maybe just add like a little like a, a plane in here give him give him something to kind of hover over you know uh let's see let's see <laughs> just so this is a little something something all right let's go into solid view tab into edit mode select this edge um easy to bring it up just extruding and then select this other edge we will go ahead and add a bevel to that. And we're just gonna create like a nice little background for him. Ten. Oops, there we go. Shade smooth. And he's looking really, really fresh so far. I dig it, I dig it. Maybe we can create like a nice darker background for him, I don't know. Actually, I think he looked pretty good on the white. And then, of course, if you want to, you can, like, rotate this. You can move it closer, further away. Oops. That looks pretty good. Maybe back the camera up on the Y-axis a little bit. <laughs> Just, like, a fun little render. Um, he obviously probably wouldn't be very metallic, to be honest. He would be much rougher than that, I think. 
But I do think he's looking really good. I don't know. I'm pretty happy with that in terms of just, like, kind of going for it and sculpting it from scratch. But, guys, that's pretty much it. I just want to go over, like, some basics of sculpting, like how you would go about doing something like this. Um, you know, if you really wanted to, you could make him out of glass, too. We'll just, we'll just see what he looks like in a glass shader. Uh, we'll just give him, like, a pink glass shader. Slightly pink hue. That looks pretty cool. Um, and then you can like lower the roughness if you want, you know, you can really mess around with this. You could even add caustics to this, but yeah, guys, that's it. Um, that's what I wanted to go over for sculpting. Um, I wasn't really sure what tutorial I was going to cover today, but this ended up being like pretty fun to work on, um, and pretty simple. So I do hope you guys enjoyed this. Like this was, um, this was a lot of fun for me. I do like sculpting and I want to sculpt more. But to be honest, it's just so time consuming. As you can see, like when I stop recording, I'll have to check how long this actually took. Um, I want to say like two hours, maybe maybe an hour and a half, but it just takes forever to fine tune stuff. Most of the time, you're better off just buying a model. Um, but yeah. All right, guys. Well, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, we just passed 6,000 subscribers, so it's super, super exciting. We're really growing fast here. Um, and I'm just, I'm just so happy to be like a part of this and actually, uh, sorry, let me face you guys towards the camera. I'm just, I'm just excited to like build this community with you guys. So hop on the discord as well. If you haven't already, um, we're just, we're having a good time in blender here. What else is there to say? Um, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you would like to see next time. I'm more than happy to cover more topics for you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.